Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Link's Awakening. It's time to do a little dungeon crawling. So, uh, who's ready to rock? Final dungeon here on tap of the Link's Awakening Let's Play. A little bittersweet, but this is a really fun one. I enjoy it. I like the dungeon music involved as I hit the wrong button. I normally have my rocks feather on Y, not the other way around, so that was my fault. This is one of those dungeons that has a, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but the dungeon itself revolves around this very specific hub area that is plagued by this guy. Kind of looks like the little devil a little bit. He's kind of obnoxious trying to fight him. You can dispatch him pretty easily with your boomerang. A large quantity of what you're wanting to do here in this dungeon early, you can wrap up almost exclusively by going left. You're gonna wind up fighting a lot of mini bosses in this one for whatever reason. The game likes to retread a lot of stuff. Kind of feels like the Donkey Kong Country approach from the original Super Nintendo. So we'll collect our fairy and keep going. That's the nice part about having to do all these things. So this is a new puzzle. Not entirely sure what this is called, but it is kind of looks like a floor waxer. And I did that wrong, but we'll try that again. You're going to want to try to fill in all the gaps very carefully by not hitting the button too early. That's the one thing that's a little frustrating about once again, this game and the control scheme and my setup is I'm using a pro controller, not a subtle flex, but I'm not really a big fan of playing with the joy cons. So I use the pro controller whenever I can. And the issue with that is it's kind of finicky. The directionality of it is not great. So I wind up, you know, bonking or going the wrong direction, etc. Game is still trying to throw rupees at you. Not really much of a purpose at this point. But we're not even three minutes in and we're already too, too many bosses deep. So that's pretty cool. Now what's nice about the boomerang is it acts in true boomerang fashion is that it will hang there for a second. And I said true boomerang fashion, which is that's not what boomerangs do at all. It acts in weird cartoon world boomerang dynamics defying the laws of physics. So it hangs there for a little bit and that makes getting rid of that mini boss pretty easy. This guy though, I don't know if I would call him a mini boss because he's just kind of there, but he is pretty frustrating just from a tedium standpoint, you know, nothing difficult about him but it is kind of frustrating having to deal with it. Now this dungeon in and of itself is quite long, just by virtue of how much space you have to retread. That's kind of one of the themes of this dungeon is you have to kind of go back and retrace your steps. But I'm gonna to try to, to be concise about it. Not as concise as the Eagle's Tower. I did not mean to power through that one. That was a complete accident. This is also a dungeon too, that going through it, you'll really want to take advantage of Mambo's Mambo. It's just a lot of warping to the beginning of the dungeon will help you because getting to the actual warp point that takes you to later parts of the dungeon doesn't happen right away. Ooh, that was lucky. So it does take some time. Now this kind of central hub room is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time. This chest here will allow us to have both the map and the compass spoilers early, which is nice. So that makes things really convenient. We're going to go ahead and take a peek. I guess that looks like a turtle. Maybe. I don't know. Call it however you want. But this dungeon features a lot of slightly hard to miss 
bombable walls, this hub room with the... I honestly don't even know what you'd call that, to be honest. But there's a lot of places here early that, once again, warping back to the start, super beneficial. You're going to hear this tune a lot. But taking that warp is pretty much the only way to avoid hangups with the floor tiler. That's the one thing that will stop you a little bit and cause kind of a bit of a convolution is this only allows you to move once per your time in this room. So you have to make sure that you're coming from the right direction to do that. This dungeon's pretty sequential. You'll find that a lot of the things that you can do, as long as you're kind of following along with what they want you to do. Oh, I thought that was a bombable wall. There is a bombable wall in here, but I forget where it is. I think it might actually be in between the P-hats. So we'll see if that works out. Quit. Oh, this is a Zelda game where the bombs themselves don't wind up diffusing until you've... Or fusing, I guess I should say. Not defusing. I want them to light until you've already moved through. So that's a little frustrating. I guess we're not going to be able to cheese it. That would have been fun, right? So this is kind of one of those final dungeons that... I mean... When I think of 3D Zeldas, I guess, or I guess I should say handheld Zeldas, not 3D Zeldas. This one is sort of 3D now, but I should say handheld Zeldas to be more accurate. I like to think of the Oracle games as kind of the, the trilogy in the thought process of, of comparisons to be able to do that. And I feel like this dungeon, I mean, I know this game was made a lot earlier than those. And I believe it was made by different people. You know, this game was made by the Nintendo, you know, B team in their free time. And then the Oracle games were made by Capcom, who are well known for exceptional game development. This dungeon in and of itself just kind of falls a little short, in my opinion, just because it's the finale. You know, you're expecting kind of a real intense challenge to wrap the game up and it, it doesn't entirely fail on that i still i mean i still think it's a fun dungeon it's it's cool but the dungeon itself while it does have a little bit of a gimmick to it is pretty it's pretty straightforward it's not it's not too tough now i'm saying that in direct comparison to the oracle of ages and seasons Eight dungeons, which I feel were pretty tough. Those ones actually took quite a bit of skill. I believe this is a fake chest. Yes. So that's a mimic. We don't need you spoiling our day. Here's another room that can only be completed from the other side. So we'll come back to that. This is There's a lot of looping around that you have to do. And there's also a lot of bombable walls that are not really super clear where they are. I thought that was one, I guess it's not. Yeah, you have to keep keep looking at your map. That's the one thing that'll really help you. I'm gonna be popping in and out of the map numerous times as I play through this. Just because if I don't, I'm not gonna be able to really see it. So we cleared out the left side. That was pretty useful. Now you're gonna want to work your way into navigating the various stairs that are throughout this dungeon. There's quite a few staircases and they can be kind of confusing. I would say the way that I like to think of it is I kind of break it down into halves where there are staircases that are meant pre-dungeon item. There are also staircases that are post-dungeon item. So until you get those, until you get the dungeon item itself, you will essentially wind up just wasting time. There's no real way for you to go. For some reason, being able to deflect BMO shots back at them is really cathartic. I can't quite identify why that is, but I just love it. Third mini boss fight, this guy again. I don't remember his name. I don't even know if I looked it up the first time around, but this kind of feels almost like a bit of a boss rush. Kind of gets you ready for the final boss that comes up, you know, once we're done here. Ooh, I almost got him. You can one cycle this guy if you get him to throw his ball early and you can pick it up. 
Takes four shots. Almost had him. Kind of reminds me of a Stingray. Rest in peace, Steve Irwin. Okay. So there is a chest to our south. We will pick that up. Just had to be snakes. All right, so that gets us the stone beak. Very nice, very nice. This one isn't, yeah, it's not, this one's not super hard. I, I just think that this is one of those dungeons that when you first play it, it can be a little daunting just because of how kind of vast it seems. It is, I, I believe it has the most rooms in it. So that can be a little bit of a, a little stressful, you know, a little kind of spooky scary, but you're in good hands, everybody. This is d -Mike place. d has got your back. So this is a, a medium difficulty floor tiler puzzle. Just keep your hands moving at all times. That's kind of the big thing. Don't let your hand up off the control stick. If you do, the input will fail and you'll be left wherever you last took off. So just to keep that in mind. I'm going to try to do this all in one, one take. So this is important. This room you can access from the right side of the hub room. Make sure that that switch is orange. If you don't hit that, then you're going to regret it later. It will be a nuisance, that's for sure. That's the best way that I can put it. And that room is very easy to find from that direction. However, it's a little bit trickier following it from the hub room because it's not clear that that wall is bombable. It kind of blends in a little bit. So that's kind of my recommendation. Oh, I can't go this way. That's kind of my recommendation for for trying to get through this is just to be mindful of where that is and to make sure you hit that switch. Make sure that it's definitely orange. You will get stopped if it's blue. You won't be able to make any more progress. So, and, it, and honestly, like what you'll wind up having to do is you'll have to literally go all the way back around and you won't be able to make any progress. And that kind of sucks. So once again, warp into the beginning. This hub room section is kind of the frustration, I think, just because they throw so many different paths at you at once that it can be tough to really differentiate which is which and what direction will lead you where. You know, you've got, I think, four staircases to pick from when you're moving in this area. And so it can be really tempting to try all of them. You know, trial and error is obviously a pretty common way to go and solve logical problems. And this is no exception. So you'll try all of those and you're going to realize that none of them are the way that you need to be. So just keep that in mind. Game loves its staircases. I guess one of the things that I wish they did more in this game would give you it, that's kind of like, it's not a complaint, it's just more of like, a, I think it could have been done better. But this was their first try at something like this, so I'll give them a pass. But it would be really cool if there could have been a situation like the Oracle games where they really challenge you to put together everything that you've learned. Whereas this game doesn't really do that. You kind of get... Oh, that's a good hint. You kind of get little bits and pieces of what you've gathered along the way. And that's supposed to be kind of indicative of, hey, have you been paying attention? You know, have you been learning everything as we've been teaching you along the way? Like, what kind of skills have you picked up? So this is a cracked floor dilemma. We'll call it that with the Gibdos here. <laughs> I love that animation of Link falling into the abyss. So, one, and the thing that's kind of the main downside to this dungeon is that once you get the dungeon item, that's kind of it. Like, you use it, like, maybe once or twice. And you can, I mean, you can use it in Overworld, etc., but this doesn't quite carry the same weight. Oh, bye-bye. There's a roasted acorn for anybody who's interested. So that up there 
is a secret medicine. Now, unfortunately, we don't need secret medicine because we already have one. We haven't used it. If we recall, that is the full heal. And I have two fairies now, which I now understand the mechanics of how to use them properly. Would be cool if it just kind of did it automatically, but it is a manual process, unfortunately. Okay, so we're actually in need of a key. That room, I believe I needed to grab it. Where are we? Okay, so I think I know what I'm doing. This was one of the one of the dungeons that I did pre-play a little bit just because of how unfamiliar I was with this one. It just felt like this one needed a little bit of muscle memory to be regained from it, and it, it worked out pretty well. I mean, I, I've got a good pulse on it. If I hadn't done that, I probably would be making all the mistakes I'm mentioning. Or I should say additional mistakes. I mean, I'm probably making plenty of now, but the typical mistakes, the stereotype mistakes. So we're in need of one more small key. Oop, that's not where I wanted to go. Can I make this, please? Beautiful, look at that. Pro gamer. Put that on my resume. Okay. Anytime I, uh, I see kind of lava parts in, dun in dungeons, like I hear this kind of song, it makes me think of Sabrosia from Seasons. I really like that game. I, I mean, I, I like both of those games. They're both fun. They're both a good time, a good jaunt. Definitely more involved than this one, but it's still fun. We're still having a good time, right? Okay. So I got to take a peek here and see where I need to go. I feel like I'm missing something. Okay. So I'm just trying to briefly remember what I did. Oh, I see what I did. I didn't go left. Ah. That was my mistake. Can I get there from here? I might need... We need to take, it, take a, a nice trip on the staircase. Let's see what this Owlsbeak has to say. Yeah, so that's just telling you the gimmick behind the floor, Tyler. Thanks, game. I don't know if I've ever really paid attention to those Owl's Beaks and felt... Oh, I have a key. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, goodness. I had the key all along. Guys, it was the friends we made along the way. Okay, where was that locked door at? I am just such a silly goose. Okay. I'm wondering if it might almost be smart enough. Smarter. Smart enough. Am I smart enough? We'll find out. If it would be smarter to warp back to the beginning. I think I'm already pretty close to it anyway. Lots of warpy warps. You gotta do what you gotta do. But yeah, this one I guess can be kind of... It can be, it can be a little frustrating when... You miss that one key, you can't make the progress you wanted to because you're not sure where to go, but you know, following your map, following your compass, following your heart, honestly, don't forget that. You gotta listen to your heart, everybody. That's a, that's a recommendation for everyone. Okay. So I believe we can continue on. Yes, there we go. So you can you can light this room up with the magic powder or something else, maybe. Who knows? Gonna need quite a few keys here actually to progress. It looks like this wall down here may be bombable. But Tetra. Yeah? Look at that guys. Pro gaming, that's not really useful. It does give you a bit of a shortcut, but I don't know. I guess I don't really look at it like that. It doesn't really seem to benefit you too much. You should be able to get back to that north part of the hub area without too much difficulty. 
I believe this one gives you another on the flip side. Yes, that's what I was trying to show earlier, but the bomb fell out of the lava and turned out to be pretty useless. All right. So here's a little bit of a puzzle. We're going to go ahead and see what the, the owl says. Okay. So this might be kind of an area where you're like, what am I supposed to do here? That's not, that's kind of cryptic, I guess. It does tell you to shoot this statue with the bow, but you're like, what? And you're like, oh yeah, hey, look. Well, okay. Yeah, like nothing's happening, right? So they do put this very handy raised block there for you to stand on. Nice. Pretty crazy how they throw that one in in there. Excuse you. And here's a refill if you need it. So, just to keep it in mind, the game's pretty generous at this point. Let's go ahead and take out the Beamos for safety. Now, this block puzzle does require a lot of skill, some dexterity, maybe. But you won't be able to move further in this room. You'll have to go back, actually, and reset it. This is a room that we'll have to come back to once we get something else. The magic powder is blocked off by those stones, so we're not actually going to be able to get over there and light those torches. Game's holding us back in a big way. No worries, everybody. We'll come back. No worries. I'm always... I've always got your back. So now that we've got some more keys, we can start unlocking these key blocks. Very nice. And I don't really know the the reasoning behind having the torches there. I guess it's just if you feel like you can't see, but I feel like this game is like more well lit than the original in my experiences. I haven't had any issues. Oh, <laughs> that's what I meant to do. Good job. Sending Link to a very fiery grave. My apologies. Nope. <laughs> Oh, boy. This is a master class in what not to do. The reality of this situation is that I'm helping. I'm helping you by showing you what not to do. So here is another mini-boss. This is actually one of my least favorite mini-bosses, new. I cannot stand fighting this guy. Because he does a ton of damage. So, you don't really have a ton of opportunities to hit him. He will punch. And he, yeah, when he, when he winds up, that kind of gives you your, your, that's kind of your lead into hitting him. You can only hit him from behind. You gotta, you gotta time your jumps a little better than that. And this might be a situation where you wind up using a fairy or hopefully not your magic or your secret medicine. Excuse me, sir. So you hop over him, give him a couple thwacks with your sword when you do it successfully, or not. Oh boy, so speak of. Oh goodness. We'll rather be safe than sorry. Unfortunately none of your other items I believe work on this guy, so you just have to time it right. Oh, that looked pretty good. The other issue too is that he's fast, so... Getting those hits in is kind of difficult because you it's kind of difficult because you have to wait for your iframes to wear off. Oh boy. I'm just getting absolutely thrashed. I do have that secret medicine though, so I'm feeling okay. Come on, guy. Come on. Oh, don't give me that. Yeah, that's why this one's kind of frustrating, is just the hitbox is pretty small. But it's okay. We'll be brought back to life. Ta-da! Happy Easter, everybody. All right. Ah, there we go. And because this dungeon does have a secret medicine in it, you can take advantage of that. So we finally have the official mini boss dungeon warp and the dungeon item. Let's see what we've got. It is a lollipop. We've got the magic rod. So now Link can become an amateur arsonist. Don't do that, kids. That's bad. Actually, we're going to want to take the warp. We don't need 
to do much more here. But you can see that crystal switch situation like I described. It's very important that you make sure to keep the blue switch down, switch it to orange. If you don't, you're going to be probably pretty frustrated with yourself just because of how much additional backtracking that you have to do. It's annoying. That'll, that'll come to pass. Now we should be able to work our way around. I want to see, wait. Ah, yeah. Let's actually go back a second. Let's let's go back to the left path we had. We can now correctly do the room to the north, which you were not able to do previously. You can just use the floor tiler as much as you need there. Now our magic rod will net us a prize. That's the only way to do that. No bomb arrow combination, no magic powders, unfortunately. Clear the ropes out. Get yourselves a required small key. Okay. Now we're moving and grooving. We're feeling pretty good. This dungeon is a bit of, is a bit on the long side, so this episode will run a little long, but I do think that I can manage to hopefully get it under the 40 minute mark if I'm doing well. That's probably a world record pace for a horrible gameplay. So keep that in mind. That's what we're after. So I think this staircase is the first of two that requires the ice block puzzle. I don't remember if this one takes me where I want to go. I believe it's the other one. There are two ice block puzzles in this one. There's that one over there. And then there's this one. So that one that I just showed you is a little more complicated of the two. A little more involved. It's not terribly difficult, but you do got to use your nagging a little bit. We got to go 5D chess. So instead, let's pop up to the one on the lower side. There's one on the top right, and then there's this one. So this one should give us what we need to do. We're still after the boss key. So go ahead and light him up. Okay, so we're doing good. Those Goombas, in <laughs> in Kwanzaa, inconsequential. I cannot speak to save my life. So this is another mini boss that we are very familiar with. I tried to come up with a bit of a strategy so I could cheese it a little bit just because this one is not really that fun to do. And he constantly moves around. So I'm trying to hit him from two corners here if I can. He's just going to constantly rotate around the room. This is the same one from the Angler's Tunnel. I'm assuming this is the fiery uh, variety. Maybe, maybe this is his cousin or his brother, who knows? I kind of feel bad. Anytime that you've, you see that his, his big old bulbous behind is, is exposed, you can throw the boomerang at him and hit him, which is kind of nice. He'll about face and then you can throw your boomerang at him. He, you can actually kind of get him locked into a bit of a back and forth cycle like this and it, you can cheese it a little bit, which is nice. That boss is kind of a nothing burger. I'm not really a fan of it. It's not fun. Just kind of tedious. So from here, we can do the final floor pusher tile puzzle. Once again, not super difficult, but Keep your hand on that joystick, everybody. You can do it a ton of different ways. Just gotta complete it, to be honest. That's it. I was afraid I was gonna get caught with the LP curse on that one just because I've messed up that puzzle like a million times when it came to the practice run. I just couldn't get it for some reason. My thumb would slip off the joystick or I just kept having to deal with other kinds of Unnecessary shenanigans felt pretty obtuse, but I figured it out. We're doing so good, everybody. We're doing so good. Actually, we're doing well. Superman does good. So here's another chest. Hook shot your way across. 
And I did lie before. I think I said incorrectly at one point that the sixth dungeon was the only one that you would wind up coming out of to get prizes. That's not true. There actually is pri there actually are prizes for six, seven, and eight. So pretty cool. So it's the pterodactyls, those are very annoying. Grab the obvious heart piece. That's pretty cool. I'm not entirely sure what the point of the warp at the top is, though, because you don't really come back here. So I guess, you know, open that, I suppose. Whatever. Mirror shield is great. But we have ourselves another mini boss fight. This one is also required. No music, though. That's kind of the downside. And this one can take a little bit just because of the dynamics of having to be pretty accurate with your bomb throwing, with the Dodongo snakes. Not really a fan of this one. They each take three hits, which is kind of annoying. Oh, <laughs> and I think I just reset that battle. That's something you also have to be mindful of is don't want to track back up the staircase. Oops. Nope, that's not it. We're doing great. All right, that was a good shot. Kind of feels like you're playing basketball a little bit. Hopefully basketball, for those of you, if you enjoy this game, maybe it's your favorite sport. Maybe you like the way they dribble up and down the court. So that's one hit each. That's pretty good. Hopefully they turn in the direction of the current area that I'm in. There we go. One and two. Oh, I must have hit that hit the same one twice. I didn't realize that. Almost done. This one just feels like a bit of padding. It is kind of cool, I guess, that they they altered the dynamic of what you're supposed to do here. Because if you remember the original fight in the slime cave or key cavern, whatever that was, it was pretty simple. And you were just facing them. So all you really had to do was put the bombs in the way, let them make the move, and then they'll scoop it up, eat it, and then you'll be done, right? So that's pretty nice. This one obviously is not, that is not the case here. So you have to be mindful of the the elevation gimmick. That should do it in our prize. We're almost done, folks, I promise. We did it. There's a small key. We like it. Okay, so let's pop into our map one last time. Okay, so I should be able to hop down here, I think. Or am I stuck up here? All right, so it wants you to go around. I'm actually going to go around intentionally here to grab that secret medicine. Not for the remainder of this dungeon. I don't feel like I'll need it just because I'm not fighting that boxing douchebag. It is nice to have. I like it. It is just one of those things that it's a nice fail safe in case, you know, you goof around a little bit or you're let's play and you're not very good at self-preservation. We all make mistakes. It's okay. All right. So we should be able to make our way back. We're actually very close to the end. Once you get the ice or the fire rod, <laughs> once you get the fire rod for the ice, that's what I meant to say. Thank you, brain. Once you get that, it's literally just a matter of navigating back to that original spot. And instead of taking the lower staircase, you're going to take the upper staircase. And then the strangest thing is actually going to be the final boss of this dungeon. It doesn't really logically make any sense with what they chose and how you fight it. But hey, facts and logic have no room here in this let's play of Link's Awakening. This is all about immersion, suspension of belief. It's like when you go to the movies, you know? Superheroes, fantasy creatures, all of those things. They're just fun, you know? There's always somebody in your life I'm sure you've met at one point who's a little too critical of all the fun things. They always have to try to find logical flaws in, in movies and games and stuff like that. Nah. We don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. 
So one quality of life thing that they did improve in this game that I'm very thankful for is in similar fashion to pots and rocks, when touching them, their hitboxes apparently were ginormous and it would give you a little warning message like, hey, you can't do anything with this yet. That's really annoying. And I remember that being a thing that I was not a fan of growing up because I'd always bump into it and I would never be able to quite figure out what I was supposed to do. I should be able to get past this. Ooh, I might have messed that up. Um, let's reset. Yeah. Okay. I actually want to wipe out this entire row of blocks. That's it. There we go. That's actually the correct sol solution to that puzzle. Make yourself a little bit of a staircase. And you can work your way down. Very nice. All right. So I think that's everything. That's all the chests at least. I guess that key was just to come into this room, but I guess you can just do it from this side. You can just take the staircase once you get the fire rod. You are going to need that, so make sure it is equipped. Open up the boss room and meet our, our uh, challenger. Boss number eight. This is Hothead. This is inferior to Chipotle in every way. So he's gonna hop around, he's gonna spew his magma. You're gonna wanna try to hit him twice. Once he is in his ignited state versus once he is cooled off, which is weird. I don't quite understand how the fire rod is what causes him to lose his ignition, you know, whatever, but I guess it's the, maybe it's the magic? He's allergic to magics. That's not fun, right? It can be a little tricky just because the the window of time to hit him is kind of small and his hitbox isn't very big, but you can, once you get him to this phase, it's, this is done so. I believe it's one, one or two hits maybe, but he does move quick. Yeah, that's it. One hit, look at that. Oh, he's conservative. You're darn right. Kind of reminds me of like never ending story. Like we're in the dream, right? And if we, if, if we end the story, then we essentially end all of the characters in it. So we are the bastion of Link's awakening. Get another heart container. Let's get our final item. The last instrument. As a percussionist myself, love this. Here we go. Love that meaty drum track. I guess the game gives you one extra key that you don't need, so that's pretty cool. It's like when you wind up building Legos and you get parts you don't have in the min in the manual. So our only our only hint is egg. Oh, okay, clears it up. Sorry. What egg? Oh, you mean the huge one? So we did it, everybody. That was the finale dungeon of Link's Awakening. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. I tried to do my best. I think that we took care of that pretty easily. So next time we're going to do a bit of a collect-a-thon and then we're going to do some kind of bonus content and then we're going to tackle the eighth dungeon in a couple episodes. Or sorry, not the eighth dungeon. We're going to tackle the final boss. This is the eighth dungeon. Tackle the final boss in a couple episodes after that. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you had a great time. I've been D-Mike. I'll see you later. Bye.